<laughs> Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith and not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you, sh you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? Let's go ahead and go to... Uh, I don't know what we're working with. What we got? Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 29. It's Isaiah chapter 29. Give me verse yourselves and wonder. He says, stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. Mm -hmm. They are drunken, but not with wine. Mm -hmm. They stagger, but not with strong drink. Mm -hmm. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, mm -hmm. and has closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. Mm -hmm. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, mm -hmm. which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he say, I cannot what are you gonna say? it is sealed. He said, I can't read it. Why? Because it's sealed. sealed. What else happened? And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. Right? He said, good. It's like it's like taking a book to somebody and be like, Yeah, read this. And he's like, Man, I don't know how to read. You understand? He's saying the vision of all. What's the vision of all? What does he mean by that? Prophecy. He's talking about all the visions, in other words, all the prophecy that we have in this book. It's just like taking a book to somebody and saying, read this, and them telling you, I cannot because it's sealed. I can't even open the book. Or going to somebody and say, read this, and they say, I cannot. I don't even know how to read. So the prophecy that's written inside of this book is such a way that it would be equivalent to take a book to somebody else and tell them to read it, and they tell you they can't do it. In other words, the mass majority of people will not understand this book. Hey! Turn that off, turn the TV off, turn all the games off, come up here and sit down. Hurry up. It's important that we understand that, because... We get frustrated, right? When we try to look into the book and we don't really get it. And it's like, man, why everybody else get it? And we, let me tell you a secret. Everybody else don't get it. <laughs> right? Yeah, Math majority of people don't know what they're talking about. They just run in their darn mouth. They don't know nothing about this book. They ain't never opened the mouth. Look, you're going to run into, every now and again, you run into people. Like, no, nah, I know the Bible. I didn't read it. What the, how they read it to you? Trust the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every time they're going to tell you. Oh, now I tell you, I was raised in the Bible. I done read it front to back. Stop that line. As soon as you, soon as you hear front to back, you'll be like, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. As soon as they say that, you know they lie. Front to back. How you gonna read the Bible front to back? You don't even know how the Bible works. I read that thing front to back. And I ain't get it. It took a while. Definitely not in order. That's, that's your first mistake. You try to read it thinking you reading it in order. Your butt gonna get to about you gonna get to about 2 Samuel. You know what I'm saying? Job gonna throw you off. You know what I'm saying? But let's say, let's say you just ease past that. You gonna get to about 2 Samuel. You know what I mean? 2 Samuel. You're like, okay. Then, that, then, then you're running the Kings. Kings and Chronicles. Okay. Then you're running the Chronicles. Then you, but you're all going to be all thrown off. Then after that, 
give up. You know what I'm saying? After you get past that, just give it. Like, you already going to be a little confused once you get in there. You know what I'm saying? You get into that Ruth Samuel area. Then you going to, after that, you just, just give up. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you ain't got nobody to teach you what you're doing. You just got to keep going. Take your time and figure it out. Put the piece together. Go put them down. Go put them back. Or y'all go sit in the room and be quiet. Right? All that stuff, it takes it take some time to really understand and, and pay attention to this stuff. But a lot of people are not paying attention. They just read. They just look at this stuff. And then even more than that, people are not even reading. They're not even opening the book. And you know they're not reading. These people don't read news articles. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you look at a news headline. I can show you some headlines that just be lying. Headline just be lying. Headline, what was the headline we looked at last week? It was a headline. What was that headline? It said something like, it said something like, uh, I forget what it was. It was something like, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it was some, I forget what it was. But it was something like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, sources say, the headline, sources say that, that uh, uh, you know, this person did not have the sufficient pass to, you know, go to this event, right? Whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? In the first, first paragraph, it says, although originally reported that, that sources said that uh, they did not have the pass, we confirmed with the FD, FBI that that is not true. But it's still the headline. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the type of stuff that people, be, if you don't read these articles, Yo, but be thrown for a loop. You just come to, they write these headlines in such a way to get your attention. You know what I'm saying? So that you will talk about the headline, whatever, and that's what people do. I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes I just read the headline, just keep moving. I ain't got time to read it or whatever. I don't make the time to read it. But that's how they get you. These people are saying, well, they don't open up this book. And that's why this book is sealed. And that's why this book is given to people as if they can't read. Because people don't understand what's going on in it. Right, it was a brother. Uh, he uh, he made a post, and only reason I saw it, I think, because uh, this other dude, you know, what I'm saying that he uh, he do some he did some photography for me in the past. You know, what I'm saying he commented on it, but he know we Hebrew, so I try to you know, what I'm saying pay attention to what he on. You know, what I'm saying I can't, I've never been able to get him to kind of get him over here, but he got his own pastor, or whatever. He he more of like a Christian Hebrew though. You know, what I'm saying so. Uh, I've been trying to get him over here. But you know what I'm saying, he haven't he haven't really, you know what I'm saying, came through or whatever. But so I try to pay attention to what he's doing and what he liking and what he commenting on. So he commented on something and it was a Christian, a real Christian, talking about, I just saw a Hebrew. All right, now he was like, Y'all be condemning people to hell for celebrating Christmas. And he was like, But that's ridiculous. If you're gonna do it, take it all away. Don't you know Nike's the shoe? That comes from a pagan guy. And Yanin, don't you know that there's an ancient tradition that Yanin comes from pagan gods? And, and he just made this huge list of stuff that probably really comes from pagan gods, Yanin. right? Yanin. Yeah. Like to like Yanin because you're tired? Yeah. Yeah. Probably probably the name of it or something is probably, uh -huh. you know, come from, you know, the ancient god Yan that put people to sleep or something like that. Uh -huh. So it's, it's probably true though. I, I didn't look into it, but it's probably true that it comes from a pagan god. So I was like. This is not fair. You know what I'm saying? It's like what you're doing right now is you're saying, hey, look at all this other stuff that may be borderline wrong. Therefore, let's do wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, did you even take the time to say, hmm, maybe I should reconsider what I'm doing? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, it's much like what, what you were saying earlier, right? It's like, okay, I don't feel right telling a person that they shouldn't sin. Right? Therefore, no one shall feel right telling the person that they shouldn't sin. Therefore, everybody should be allowed to do whatever they want to do. And it's like, no, that's not how this works. There's an order, and if you don't feel right, then deal with why you don't feel right. Don't get to talking about everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, let's go with what's right. So let's talk about Christmas and Easter and how that's different from Yanni. When people yawn, are they saying I'm yawning to the Most High God? Did they say Most High God made me yawn just now? Did I say I yawn in honor of God? I yawn to celebrate God. Yeah, you got it right there. 
No, when I'm young, I'm tired. <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with God. When I have my Nikes on, am I saying, whenever I put on Nikes, that represents me being saved by the Most High God. I wear Nikes in celebration of the Most High God. I've never heard anybody say that. So then I don't care where yawning come from and I don't care where Nikes come from. That's a shoe and that's an action to me. Right? Is Christmas the same thing? Because where did Christmas come from if you ask a Christian? A stupid Christian. Jesus' birthday. Is that the truth? No. That's a problem. Right? Now I've turned a pagan tradition into a lie to support God. That's a problem. You know what they call that in the Bible? Vain tradition. Easter. Bunnies and all this stuff in celebration of God? That's a problem. It's about his resurrection. So that's why I'm looking for eggs in my backyard. Makes a whole lot of sense. Right? That is a lie and that's a problem. The problem is not pagan tradition that's been repurposed. I don't care nothing about that. You do whatever you want to do. The problem is you've now taken a pagan tra tra tradition, a, a pagan religious service, and it's still religious for you. And you just changed the religion. And now you're dealing with something sacred, sacred where the Most High God say, what, is it, what does it call for all of us? What does he want us to do? And what else? We're supposed to be what? Holy. What does holy mean? Separate. So how in the world are we setting him apart if we taking a pagan tradition, mixing him up in it and say, ah, it's because of you? You're not making a difference. You're not setting anything apart. Right? It's confusing. And that's what he tries to stay away from. So I'm looking at this post and I try to break that down in my response to it. Then he comes back and he's like, yeah, yeah, bro, but you're not understanding. What I'm saying is, and he goes back to the Nikes and all that. And I'm like, my man, look, you got to listen to what I'm telling you right now. Stop talking to me about Nikes unless you're wearing Nikes in service of God. Because if you start saying that, then I agree with you. Take them darn Nikes off. Right? I agree with you. If, you. if you're under the assumption that by wearing Nikes, you are obeying God, you're doing what God wants you to do, you're giving glory to God, like anything by wearing those Nikes, if that's the okay, case, then we are, we're in agreement. Take them off. Get your butt out of here. That's a lie. That thing is from pagan stuff. It's that nothing. Like, you can't mix that with God. you wearing your Nikes because you want to wear your Nikes. Who cares? He's like, yeah, but it's a heart issue. <clears throat> He's like, man... If a, if a person does something and they own it, I mean, and, 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 and they, they don't have any ill intentions with it, and they doing it, I was like, oh, man, that's a couple key words you just said there, brother. You said intentions and heart. So I was like, this is the problem, right? I see the point that you're making overall. You're saying, I'm wearing my Nikes. I don't know nothing about these being from pagan stuff, so why does it matter? Same thing with Christmas. I'm celebrating Christmas. I don't know nothing about this being pagan. Or maybe I do, but I ain't doing it. Maybe I do know my Nikes from pagan stuff. But I ain't wearing Nike because they're pagan. And I ain't celebrating Christmas because they're pagan. I'm celebrating them because of Jesus Christ. It's like, okay. To any normal person, it make a lot of sense. Right? You don't mean nothing by it. Matter of fact, you're so mature. You can do it e anyway. Even though it's not, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's not pure, you can do it anyway because you're so mature and you know exactly why you're doing it. But you know what that relies on? You know what you're leaning on? Your own understanding. And that's a problem, right? Because the book, what does the book tell us about intentions? Uh, I mean, how many ways are right to a man? Yeah, a lot. God right. Books say every way. You know what I'm talking about? He said to a man, every way is right. Well, Do you understand what that means? That means that I can justify literally every action that I do. Do we not see that right now? Mm -hmm. When people say they live with no what? Regrets. Mm -hmm. 
What are they doing? For you to live with no regrets, what does that mean that you've done to yourself? You've justified everything that you've done in your life. Can that same person come to you and say they've never made a mistake? No. So that means they don't regret the mistake. If you don't regret a mistake, if you acknowledge I made a mistake, but I have no regrets, you know what you've done? You've justified it. In other words, you've forgiven yourself. You've wiped your slate clean. That's what God, when, that, when, when God, when God forgives us, you know what he's doing for us? He's justifying us. He's making us justice. He's making us justified, righteous, right? So if you justify yourself, right, what room is there for God to do it? Hmm. Exactly. We look at these things and people don't know what they're doing. They're looking like every way to a man is right. That means that I'm making up the rules as I go. If I do this, I mean, I did it because that's what I knew at the time. You know what? And I don't even regret doing that because if I didn't do that, I would have never gone gotten where I got now. That's how people think, right? If I would have never, I mean, sure, it was a rough time and I made some mistakes, but if I didn't go through that, I would have never learned the lesson that I learned right here, right? For them, that make a whole lot of sense, right? All that is indicative of a person saying, every way was right. But you know what the next part of that verse is? Every way, to a man, every way that he, every way is right. Next thing you say, but God weighs the heart. What was the one I'm thinking about? Uh... Uh, man chooses his path, but God. Yeah. Same, same concept though, right? It's just like you, you think you doing something, and the Most High God gonna really show you what's happening, right? It's like you know what I'm saying. You had, you had the the king of Assyria, who in his mind he was attacking the, he is attacking the Israelite because he the big, the head honcho. Most High God was like, yeah, but you're just really my tool to punish the Israelites, right? So it's like you think you doing something, but the, all the time it's working out for God's plan, right? But this is saying basically. God is weighing the heart. So I'm choosing something. And in my mind, I've made what, whatever my choice was, I've made it okay. I made it right. I made, I'm living with it. I'm okay with it. I've forgiven myself. I've justified myself. But the most high God is digging deep and he's looking at the heart. So two things he said to me. He mentioned a person's intentions and a person's heart being in the right place. Right? So where would I go next? Jeremiah 17. Mm. And what would that say, T? Heart is deceitful above all things. What does deceitful mean? Lying, lying. Okay, so he said the heart be lying above all things. And what else? No man can know it. He said no man what? Can know it. So why are you talking to me but if who can know it? If the book say who can know a heart? Why are you talking to me about a person's heart? You know what that tells me? You never read. Not for understanding, at least. Maybe you read this verse, right? But you've never sat down and tried to understand this book. It didn't capture it. It didn't stand. Because you wouldn't be talking to me about intentions. Because if you talk to me about intentions, you would know that every way, everybody thinks their intentions is good. That's what that's saying. When you say every way is right in the man's eye, everybody thinks their intentions are good. But God weighs the heart. Okay, so if God is weighing the heart, and you telling me, the, uh, you know what I'm saying, my heart was in the right place. You know what that means? Your heart lied to your brother. Because the heart is deceitful among all things. I don't know who can know it. What did it say after that? See, you got it? Yeah. It's Jeremiah chapter 17, verse what? Nine? Nine. Eight? Nine. It's Jeremiah chapter 17, verse nine. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And what? Oh, whoa. And that, that, you know what? You know. What does it mean to be desperate? I just can't. I just gotta have, gotta do it. Just desperate. Yeah. That thing saying desperately wicked. I was like, ah, oh, I just boy. gotta be wicked. Yeah. The heart, y'all, these people don't know what they are here playing with. They be saying these things because it sounds good, because nobody taught them the truth of the word. So it sounds good to be like, oh, my intentions are good. Because you feel like that excuses you. My intentions was, my heart was in the right place. Well, you know, don't talk to me. As soon as you get talking to me about your heart, about your own heart, 
Only time, only time I want to hear about heart is if you tell me what the book said. Because I know that you don't know your heart, and you ain't, you definitely don't know nobody else's. That's book. If I took it any other way, I'd be lying. Or I didn't believe the book. If I believe the book, I know you have no idea what your heart is doing. And I know that your heart going to make you feel like you are. Right. So as soon as you get telling me my heart was in the right place, I'm like, yeah, you a sinner. You know what I'm saying? You definitely a sinner. A righteous man, how he going to judge his heart? According to the word, yeah. But I mean practically. You know what I'm saying? He's using the word. How is he going to judge his heart? Righteous works. That's it. Because y'all should have told us something. He said, from the heart. The wicked man produces wickedness. Of the heart of man, that's the treasures, right? Mm -hmm. So treasure is like what I'm storing, what I keep, right? So from the heart of man is where all the stuff I store is. So if then I then produce wickedness. That means I'm storing what? So I mean, if I have a tree and fruit comes off of it, and it happens to be an apple. What kind of tree is that? Apple tree. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get an orange from an apple tree? No. Am I going to get a poison berry from an apple tree? Fresh water can't produce. If I got a fresh water spring, is salt water going to come out of it? What happens if I got a fresh water spring and the ocean running at the same time? What kind of water I got? But I got a fresh water spring though. How I turn into salt water if I got an ocean? Ain't it both? So you mean tell me I got this cup of water. Filter. It's good water. Ain't you? you have some of my water yet? My filter water? You know what I'm saying? I got a good filter on there. You drink that water, it's best water. It's like aquafina and it ain't got nothing on my darn water. You take drink some of it's filter, good. Everything out of it. No fluoride. You know this weather water you guys got fluoride in it, make you docile. You know what I'm talking about? No fluoride in this water, right? So they say, I don't know. I, ain't, I don't know nothing about what I'm talking about. I just know what they told me and I bought it. You know what I'm talking about? So I drink it, right? Ain't got no water in it. Every now and again, I like to gargle salt water. You know what I'm talking about? If I take salt and pour it in my water, right? But just a little bit of salt. This is fresh, pure, filtered water. If I pour a little bit of salt in this water, how, what is it? Even I only... It's mostly just this fresh water, though. I just poured a little bit of salt. How much? What, what is it? Y'all keep playing with God. It's like this stuff makes sense to us in every other situation. Most like God trying to tell you no sin. As soon as you have, I mean, just a little bit of sin. Guess what it is? You're a sinner. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? No sin, you're not a sinner. A little bit of sin, you're a sinner. A lot of sin, you're a sinner. Medium sized sin, you're a sinner. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's, it's not right. It's not. What I'm saying is, the stuff that we be discussing is not foreign. Now, this is not like, oh, I, I've never heard anything like that. No. These are regular, everyday concepts. Yeah, like at work, we have a policy and procedures. Everybody understands that these are the things that binds us. And these are the things that we have to operate by to have a well-oiled machine. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. For everybody to flourish in the operation. Anybody mm -hmm. that breaks these rules... They can be subject to certain punishments, you know what I'm saying, including termination, depending on the severity of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So everybody has common sense when it comes to that stuff, but when it comes to governing yourself according to the book, then it's like anything goes. But they don't use that logic in anything else in their life. No, it's, it's just plain stuff, right? And that's, and that's the problem that we get because people are not educated in this way. You can make the you could try to make the case logically well. in their head that Christmas, Easter, Nike shoes, yawning, all these different things are the same. And if y'all don't think Nike shoes and yawning are an issue, then you shouldn't think Christmas and Easter is an issue. And therefore, everyone should be able to do whatever they want to do. Right? And I look at that post and I'm like, bro, you have to know. That you don't know the heart and you don't know the intention. But let's just say the heart is telling the person that they're good and that their intentions are good in their own mind. That person then 
is creating a result of sin and creating a result of a lie and spreading a lie. And therefore, the fruit that's coming from that person is indicative that that person is actually wicked. Doesn't matter how we feel about it, how you feel about it, it comes down to the word. When we read in Colossians, does it or does it not tell us stay away from vain traditions? That's all we have to do. So you have to then make the choice, my brother. Are you going to listen to what the books say? I was like, you know what? This would be a much safer position for you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this. let me tell you how you could phrase what the point that you're trying to make. This would be a much safer position. Hey, guys, I also learned that Christmas and Easter have pagan roots. Right? If I were you guys, I wouldn't mess with it. There's plenty of holidays in the Bible that God actually put together that we can read about that have rich history and we can celebrate them. That also goes for Sunday worship. Right? Like, how would that not... To me, I just like being safe. That's a safer position. I'm not telling you going to hell. I'm not telling you to... I, staying out of it. I'm just going to tell you what is there and what the right thing is to do. Right? If you're a Christian and you don't feel right, like, yeah, but maybe it's wrong, maybe it's not. Okay, you don't have to make that decision if you're not comfortable. Right? But you do know for a fact that it is a pagan. Like, you know that. Like, you as a Christian, you know that it comes from paganism. So if you just had two things in front, let's not, let's say either one was right. Right? But you're just not sure. Right? You had these two things in front of you. You mean to tell you you're going to prefer the one from paganism? One, you know for sure, you know for sure that it's right, right, to not celebrate a pagan root of day. There is no question about that. Nobody's going to be like, well, maybe that's wrong, right? To not celebrate Christmas, you know for sure you're in the good. All other things being equal, right? Your whole life you live righteously, right? And then this person, except for Christmas, lives righteously, but he celebrates Christmas. This person, except for Christmas, lives, I mean, uh, doesn't celebrate Christmas and lives righteously everywhere else in their life. Right? These two. Right? This one, the Christmas part, eh, maybe, I don't know, jury's still out, who knows, not a big deal, maybe it is. This one, which one you gonna choose? Just go the safe route. Tell people, listen, clear yourself of the dirt. Hey, listen. That thing is rooted in paganism. I would suggest not messing with it. Just for conscience sake. If you, maybe you won't go to hell. Maybe you will. You know, but just for conscience sake. I would su suggest not messing with it. It's an easier position to take. So I, but I told him, I was like, that's a better position to take. Because now you're putting yourself in the position of a teacher. And you making a bold claim. You making a, your claim is that it don't matter. I was like, but you don't know that. And in our discussions, you going back and forth with me, you definitely ain't proved what you're talking about. You ain't opened up no book and told me how because it says this. Like, you ain't even pointed to nothing in the book. They never did. Yeah, that's crazy, too. Like, I'm you a book. You ain't even came back and pointed to nothing, you know what I'm saying, that makes sense in the book. So you know what? It's a better position to shut your darn mouth and go with what the book say. Guess how many people won't do that, though? That's too easy. That's too boring. You know what I'm saying? You can't get, you know what the problem is? Who can get glory from doing that? From pouring to the book, who can get glory? That's what it is. It's uh, Isaiah chapter 29. Where would we leave off? Probably about verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. They draw near to me with their mouth, they good Christian self. And they say, oh, I'm celebrating Christmas and Easter and I love God and he loves me. And you know what? God walks with me every day and I thank God because he woke me up. What type of stupid stuff is that? I thank God that he woke me up this morning. <laughs> these people, I mean, these people just say, that's it. It feel good, though. Don't, don't that sound good? It's so like, look, you probably sitting back here right now like, oh, what in the 
world is wrong with thanking God because he woke you up this morning. They ain't that even it's to be honest. Right? It's like, it's like, what? Why can't I thank God for waking God wake? It's not that you can't. So it's like, not you can't. What sounds good? Like, if you die today, like 30 years of sinning? Or if you die when you was 90 or 90 years of sinning? You know what I'm saying? If you keep that attitude like your whole life. God woke me up this morning. It's like your rap sheet is like 90 years long now. You know what I'm saying? You gotta ask yourself, why is waking up a blessing? Yeah, murderers woke up today. You know what I'm saying? Probably like the worst people in prison that you know. Yeah. We pray for the wrong thing. We thank God for the wrong thing. And they woke up too. I mean, uh, right? Okay, like, okay, I'm up, right? <laughs> why is this though? Why am I up? All right? Why is this good for me? Why is it up that I? Why is it great that I woke up this morning so I can get up and sin some more? Is it great because oh, I love my family? I'm or giving God glory or, for this stuff. Or, Think about it. My life is full of sin. And I'm giving God glory because he gave me another shot at it. Yeah, yeah. Like I was, I was about to say. Like, I woke up. Thank God I woke up this morning. I could be dead. And for what I'm doing, I could go to hell. You know what I'm saying? So now I re uh, acknowledge that I could have went to hell if I died. But you still waking up to it. But you not yes. supposed get to. back to it. You can't change like that. So it's like it's like a trap, bro. Like you wake up and it's like, oh, thank God he woke me up this morning. Cause what I did last night, you know what I'm saying? And it's like and you don't have no desire to change your to change what you're doing. It's like that's a spit in God's face. You know what I'm saying? If you take that route, like if you're acknowledging in your head that thank God he gave me another chance, and you're not doing nothing with it, that's pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to somebody that just literally don't know. What they doing, and then when they when they get when they come across that knowledge, they're like, oh, I ain't even know that. Then that person can at least consider. But somebody that already know and just refuses, like to, you know, pay attention to the signs. That's pretty bad. Yeah. So you'd have a proper chance. way to do it. You wake up, and you say, man, I gotta get my life right. Thank you, God, for giving me another shot. Right? That would be appropriate, right? Because your intention. Right? We already talked about intention, but nevertheless, your intention is that I have another chance to correct what I've been doing in my life. Here's the problem. You spend another day and you don't correct it, and you wake up the next morning. It's like, okay, thank you for another chance. Guess what? You repeat that, again, spitting in God's face. So what you think is, oh, I'm doing the right thing by sending up a prayer every morning and doing all this, but I haven't changed my behavior. That is going to work against you in the end. It's like court. It's like every day he's going to be like, oh, so you knew what you should have been doing. You knew you knew you were supposed to thank me, but you ain't never think. You never thought to open up the book, huh? You never thought to actually do what I said. You just you were just drawing near to me with your mouth, just like it was just said. This people draw. Read it again. Watch this. For as which, much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, they honor me. But have removed their heart far from me. Their heart. We got the heart again. Remember, the heart is what? Deceitful. Above what? All things. And it's what? That's what we can Who can know? Who can know? So, my heart is telling me, man, I love God. Let me send up a prayer this morning. And thank you. Thank you for waking me up, God. Thank you for giving me just another chance at this earth. I know I ain't perfect, God. You've been right here with me this whole time. Guess what's telling me to say that? My heart. My heart is telling me we good. Right? But that thing is desperately wicked. Who can know it? The most high God is saying, you're removing your heart far from me. So it's two things going on and we don't even realize it. We think in our minds, we're giving honor to God. God is pleased with what we're doing right now. And that's our heart lying to us. Right? But we don't even know our heart well enough because we can't we can't discern our heart. Only way we can discern our heart is through our behaviors and, and shedding light through the word. So it's like a it's it's like it's like it's like a, a doctor's checkup. Doctor checkup, he look in your eyes, he look in your ear, he tell you hold out your tongue, he put that, that, that darn uh what's it the popsicle stick on your darn darn tongue, he look down, look at your tonsils. And through all that, he's looking inside of your body for signs. Right? He see if if he see a couple bumps on your tonsils back there, he's like, oh man, you might got tonsillitis. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it might be something wrong. He gets to looking in your ear and he see an infection in there. Like, oh man, you know what? You might have this, that, and the other. You might have an ear infection. Right? 
He get looking at your eyes and be like, oh man, you know what I'm saying? I see, you know what I'm saying? Something coming here. Right? He's looking at the signs of your body. You, you said you've been coughing all week, huh? Is it back off? Try to cough for me right now. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that sounds like strep. Right? There's something going on inside of you that we don't recognize. We don't know. Right? I mean, I just know I don't feel good, but you know what I'm saying? I don't know exactly what's going on. He can diagnose it. How can he diagnose it? Because he had years and years of studying books that told him how to diagnose various things. Well, this is the same thing. There's stuff going on inside of us that we may think is one thing. We may think, you know what I mean? People go to the doctor and they thought they were perfectly fine. There ain't nothing wrong with me. There's another. No, I mean, I got a little pain, but that always happens. A little pain in, you know what I'm saying, my chest. That always happens, though. But you don't know, realize that, that that's a sign that you got a heart attack coming, right? Let me check your heart. They running through that thing, the CAT scan, this, that, another. My homegirl, you know what I'm saying? She, she got to wear, you know what I'm saying? She got to wear like a little pacemaker. She didn't think nothing was going on. She went to the doctor, you know what I'm saying? Check her out. They're like, nah, 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 nah. Got COVID going on. You got to put this thing on. Right? That's how, the, that's how it works because we be thinking ain't nothing going on. The doctors know. No different. No different. No different. It's stuff going on. Our heart telling us one thing we think is cool. We think is the most high God trying to tell you, Lo, if you got these symptoms, if you cussing, lying, cheating, all these things, if these are your symptoms, let me tell you something. If you getting darn drunk, intoxicated, right? You find yourself always darn mad and envying people, right? If these are your symptoms, guess what? There's something going on with your heart. Grab a uh, grab a uh, Mark chapter seven. Give me verse uh, twenty. Well, twenty or twenty five. I think Mark chapter seven verse twenty. What does the book say? It's twenty. Where your mom at? Downstairs. Yeah, let my baby up here and fend for herself, huh? And he said, "That which comes out of the man." Look, this is Mark chapter seven verse twenty. He said, that which comes what? Out of the man, that defiles the man. Those are symptoms. What comes out are symptoms, right? There's something inside of you, some infection inside of you, and then it produces stuff to come out. If your cut is infected, what comes out? Uh, what, green stuff? Pus. Yeah, that's it. Right? I think you gang green. Same thing, gang green, right? When your leg becomes infected, Right? It gangrenes. Right? Gout. You know what I'm saying? Your foot get all swollen and then pain. You know what I'm saying? Like these, like all these different things, it like it produces something externally. There's something going on in, and your body pushes stuff out to let you know what's happening. Right? So this is what Yahushua was saying. He's like, don't worry about what go into the body. He's like, man, it's the stuff that comes out of the body. That's what you should be concerned with. He said, from inside what? He gonna say, from the heart of a man, ain't he? From Why we keep talking about heart? From within, out of the heart of men. Because the heart is lying to you, right? The heart is telling you, we good. You trying your best. You are doing the best you can. You're a good person. Nobody's perfect. Don't let nobody make you feel this. This, that, that. That's what your heart is telling you the whole time. It's trying to build up your confidence or whatever. Sometimes it's doing the opposite. It's tearing you down when you should be up, right? Whatever your heart is, it's just lying to you. If it's true that you actually all right, your heart going to be like, oh, you overly righteous and you being self-righteous and you don't even need to take it that serious and this, that, and other, right? And if you just down and out, it's going to be like, you know what? You all right, man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody perfect. Don't nobody know what the truth is anyway. It's your truth. You got to live your truth. See, your heart just telling you whatever it needs to tell you, right? Meanwhile, this is what's coming out of it. From within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries. Adulteries. What? Fornication. Fornication. Murders. Murders. Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Evil eye. Evil eye. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Pride. Pride. Foolishness. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All these things come from within and they do what? Defile the man. They defile me. You can't buy good over right here, right? 
They say all these things come from within and they defile a man. He's telling you when you see this stuff, this is indicative that your insides are unclean. Forget what you're putting in your mouth and in your body. This is indicative that your insides are unclean. And that's what we need to look for. Don't talk to me about how your heart feels and what your intentions are. Talk to me about what your behavior is. Because if your behavior is lining up with the book, then you can be sure. You can walk up to God with confidence. If you just tell me, well, I mean, my heart tells me that I, you know, my heart was in the right place when I did this. I feel pretty good about what I was doing. Oh, well, that's different now. You know what I'm saying? That don't tell me darn nothing. I can't do nothing with that. You say you feel? That's how you feel? Y'all got to understand, what are emotions? That's spirits. That's all it is. Just spirits. And when I say spirits, not all spirits are necessarily like flat out bad. You know what I'm saying? Spirits is just energy, right? So it's just... Let me tell you about that. Like, you got a man that controls his uh, spirits. Like, his feelings are bad in there. Huh? You know about that? Is that a man that can, can, that can conquer or can, that can, uh, his spirit or something like that? Yeah, yeah. You take you take control and clean out your the spirits of your house. You know what I'm saying? Clean out all them spirits. You know what I'm saying? And send them out. And you know what I'm saying? You leave that place empty and it's going to come back and, you know what I'm saying, invite their friends. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it is. It's spirits. It's emotions. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, no, are emotions evil in themselves? No. No, not necessarily, right? However, if you let your emotions control you, right, then now you're in a bad place. Because you're letting spirits control you, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to break all this stuff down. We're trying to make sure that spirits got to submit to the will of the Most High God, right? That's the only way this stuff works. We have to keep control. These people don't understand this stuff. So when we when we read and we read uh, Isaiah 29, it tells us that, um, and let's go back to Isaiah 29, right? If we When we read Isaiah chapter 29, it tells us that the heart, uh, you know what I'm saying, like with their mouth, they be, you know what I'm saying, trying to get close. They be praising me every morning, going to church and all this other stuff. But the heart is far from me. Is it kind of like uh, what happened to uh, when they was given sacrifices and stuff like that, but they still was not uh, uh, wasn't obeying God. I think uh, I forgot what happened. I can't remember, but it's like uh, they were trying to give sacrifices to God, and he asked them like, "What what did I require?" You? That's right. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. It's like so the equivalent to that now would be us repenting every day, right? Asking God for forgiveness. That would be equivalent to a sacrifice, right? Because that was our the sacrifice was a way to get for be forgiven, right? Now we just ask for forgiveness. So it's equivalent. Like you, you know what I'm saying? You go, you take a sacrifice, and you still keep the same behavior, right? Most like God looking at you like, okay, you playing with me. So it got to the point he was like, man, I don't even want no sacrifice because it don't mean nothing. So how you think he feel when you know somebody asking for forgiveness every day, right? He let me don't mean nothing to me. Keep reading. What we got? Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe to them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. No, nah, we missed something. We'll go back. Wherefore the Lord says, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but they remove their heart far from me. Watch this. And their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. And that's why you got all these traditions. Right? That's why you got people that worship on Sunday. They don't come from God. That's why you got people that refuse to call him anything other than Jesus. You come to him and be like, no, his actual name was Yahushua. Well, instead of just saying, oh, that's interesting, that's his actual name. I should probably call a man by his actual name. Like, yeah, verify it. Do whatever you got to do. Look it up. But once you find out it's true, I should call it. These people know his name is Yahushua. And they'll be like, well, you know what? He always been Jesus to me. What type of stuff is that? Then they argue with it. So you trying to say that if I call him Jesus, that God ain't hearing me? Like, I didn't say that. I don't, that's not what I said. I don't know. Right? Maybe he is. Maybe he ain't. That ain't none of my business. I'll tell you what. His name is Yahushua. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the, why is it, 
why is there any other conversation? Like, what are we talking about? It's like they go and they the first instinct is to defend what they are doing. Yeah. You have to understand that that's pride. That's not giving God glory. If you all you always looking to defend your church or defend your denomination or defend your tradition, that is you, because the fear of God was taught to you by the tradition of men. You think you're showing reverence to God or you're showing honor to God. By doing, by celebrating Christmas, worshiping on Sunday, and calling him Jesus. Because that's your tradition. And that's how you believe that that's how it works. That's not how it works. You have to get into the book and split it. Like, you have to understand that this book, which was written, this portion of the book was written thousands, not just 2,000, thousands of years ago. Right? And it's describing what you're doing today. That ought to make you feel like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Like that ought to make you a little nervous. Like, this guy knows it's in here telling you traditions of men. The fear of God talked about tradition of men. And you still in 2021 with full knowledge that Christmas is pagan, Easter is pagan, Sunday worship is pagan, all this stuff, full knowledge. You still do it and defend it. That ought to make you feel a certain type of way. That's why I be telling people, people like, man, how you know you say everybody else interpretation of the Bible is wrong. How do you know that you preach it right? Like, first of all, I didn't say everybody else. I'm just saying I ain't met nobody. You know what I'm saying? I ain't came across. Look, I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying I haven't come across a YouTube channel. Well, Christians make it too easy. Like, almost yeah, everything you know. they do. It's like you're not even trying. Yeah, yeah it's like, uh, I ain't talking about everybody. I'm talking about you and your church. Like, that thing's like, obvious. It, you're not even trying. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know how easy it is to shoot some of your stuff up? There's no way. Like, at least make it difficult. On a random Sunday, I can go to a church and just pick up, pick apart everything they say. Does that mean every Sunday you out here telling big lies? You ain't taking you know, like, you know, so this Sunday, let me just keep it real. But you can't. Cause once you tell a lie, you can't connect. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't gonna do too much connecting the lie to the truth. You know what I'm saying? So you have to uphold the lie each week. Too easy. Too easy. As soon as I sit down, I'll be like, oh, well, there you go. You know what I'm saying? Clever lies, too. Like, yeah, no, I see why he, you know, I see where he's going with it. But you have to understand, this only happened because of this and this, that, and the other. You got to do this web, and that's where people, you lose people. Because people usually only think, you know, one or two layers. You know what I'm saying? You get to give them the five, six layers, they're going to be like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, okay, so what am I supposed to do? Like, yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Just, this is what you're supposed to do. Mm, but my pastor say, all right. Or even worse, they'd be like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You never hear from him again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, all right. Yeah, you cool. said it, though. You know what I'm saying? You said it. Yeah, y'all, she would say, you said it. All right? Let's, hear, let's pick up where we left off last week. This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Hmm? You good? I'm trying to make sure you all right. You good? You got everything you need? It's 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Back in the time the church I used to go to, you try to pull out a phone back then and try to look on the Bible. Put them phones away. <laughs> I say, Put them phones away. You know what I'm saying? I'm better than my old pastor. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Put them phones away. Like, nah, but it's convenient. You know what I'm saying? You be able to pull it up in three seconds. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where the book is. I gotta find it. Go to the table of contents. You know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Uh huh. If any obey not the word. He said, be in subjection to husbands. That if any obey. No, no, no. He said, be in, be in subjection to all husbands. Be in subjection to your own husbands. Ooh, that hit you right there. Get that on. We're talking to my darn wife. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I got booked. Oh, I look. I got booked. My wife ain't got to do nothing your butt say. You better shut your mouth talking to her. You know what I'm talking about? I got darn booked to hold it up too. He said, your own husband. Now I can talk to you, but sit your butt down. You see, she's sitting. <laughs> Subjection. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, there you go. Somebody else get to the Daniel. Tell her, st tell her stand up. Just tell her. Just tell her right now. Stand up. 
You see her butt still sitting, don't you? That's right. You know what I'm talking about? That thing work. You know what I'm saying? Subjection. That's what it say though. Be a subjection to your own, your own wife. A lot of times, men has men. What one thing I will give women, and I ain't giving them nothing. I say it like that, you know, halfway jokingly, right? But one thing that is true, and there's many things that are true, but one thing that is true is men have mishandled the responsibility that the Most High God has given, right? Which then created a, a lot of distrust. Right? It's created a lot of distrust. And it put in a position where women have now tried to overcorrect. Right? So now we have these like feminist movements and you know what I'm saying, men hate women and all this different stuff that's going on. Right? When in actuality, it just it's just that, you know what I'm saying? There, there may be a little bit of that, right? Or some of that, but in actuality, men have just just mishandled the, the, the responsibility in general, right? Not all men, but in general. Um, which has created this atmosphere of mistrust and distrust. Um, so that's what this, that's what this is about. It's trying, it's kind of letting you know that no, this is not the position of just any man to just boss around any woman, right? And that any man should have control over any woman. No, 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 no. You are in subjection to your own husband, right? That's the lead that you follow, whatever that lead may be. Right, keep going. That don't mean that don't mean nothing about he ain't say nothing about the woman should wash the dishes or clean the kitchen or this, that, and the other. That's how we have it worked out. You know what I'm saying? But they ain't got nothing to do how everybody else work out there. Perhaps a man wanna leave his house by washing the dishes and doing all the stuff around the house and working in the house. And his wife go work. Right? Like it don't matter. It's however a man wanna set up his house. That's how a man set up his house. The key is that the wife should be in subjection to that leadership. Right? That's the only key. You know what I'm saying? It ain't got to be traditional the way, you know what I'm saying, these people tell us it should be. You'll never see anything in the Bible like that. Hold we got. Grab a, grab a Proverbs chapter 31 real quick. Because a, a lot of people don't even know what they're dealing with when they come to this book. They come to this book and they come to a darn blind. They don't know what they're looking at. They get to putting all this stuff. They be putting all types of stuff. See, yeah, but that's the Bible that say women got to do that. I was like, the Bible say women got to do what? Well, I mean, women got to be in the house. And say, the Bible said that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, show it to me. I didn't want to see one place in the Bible where the Bible said this got to happen. The Bible said they go, he got a free ride. You know what I'm saying? And we can't say nothing about it. Book ain't never said nothing about a woman got to stay here and do this and do that. No, you better shut your mouth. Ain't no book. Don't put that lie on the book. Put that lie on, the, on, on these white folks. The white folks that tried to use the book to justify what they did. Don't put that stuff on us. It's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1. Watch the book say. The words of King Lemuel, the mm. prophecy that his mother taught him. His, who, who taught him? His mother. <laughs> I thought women ain't supposed to teach men. His mother taught him. There were women prophets. Yeah. There were women prophets and what else? There were women judges. A mom can teach her ch child son. We don't know when he learned this. We don't know what age he was. Right? Keep going. What my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. Uh huh. Give not your strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. So you know what he just said? I mean, you know what she said, just said? You don't be chasing them things. Get you one. And don't submit to the woman. He said, don't give your strength to the woman. In other words, you you maintain your leadership, right? Let's see, keep going. Oh, they ain't gonna like this, Daniel. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna like this. Watch this, though. It is not for kings, O the mules. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Mm -hmm. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. He said, if you a king, guess what? You keep yourself darn sober. They ain't gonna like this, Daniel. Keep going. There's a woman teaching them this. Watch this. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine to those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget. You're going through stuff. That's what all, all these people going through stuff. All of that. That's why they strung out on drugs. Y'all remember, uh, y'all might not be familiar with him. You remember the dude that used to travel around the world eating? What's his name? The one that traveled around the world. He died. He committed suicide a couple years ago. But he used to travel around the world. And eat all the stuff. Oh yeah, bizarre food. Uh, it's one of them shows. Name, but, yeah, but he, he died now. They do. 
I don't know if he, no, nah, he ain't he's Australian. Australian. Yeah, yeah. I want to say he's Australian. What's his name? He's that nasty stuff. Isn't it like Bourdain or Bourdain or something like that? I, don't know. I think I know what you're talking some about. Some John Bourdain yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Josh yeah. Bourdain, something like that. Right? He, he, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, I remember hearing about him. Everybody's like, oh, man, he got it all. He get to travel the world and do this and that. Because he travel the world, eat all types of disgusting stuff. People look at that stuff and be like, man, that's great, man. What a life. Right? Come out. Man on drugs. You know what they said about him? They said that he was on drugs and then he went to rehab or whatever, stopped being on drugs. And traveling the world and doing all that wild stuff, it gave him a similar feeling that the drugs gave him. Right? That rush. Because you know that's what all drugs is. It unlocked that. What's it called? Uh, What's the thing? Endorphin? Like the endorphin. No, dopamine. You know what I'm oh. saying? Dopamine. Endorphins too though. I think. Endorphin. What's it? Endorphin. But something like that, whatever that chemical is, right? But I think it's dopamines, right? And that thing make you feel a certain way. And that's what the drugs, you know, most drugs, they unlock that. You know what I'm saying? So it give you this feeling like a bliss and wonderful and this, that, and other. But, and, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff happens also when you're excited or you're happy about something. So he had to keep exciting himself and putting himself in these situations that unlock that, that thing naturally, though. It was a natural way of doing it. Turns out he committed suicide. Right? Because... The reality is, right, whether I'm dealing with this with drugs and medication or whether I'm dealing with this with these these wild situations, there's something going on inside of me that hasn't been dealt with, right? I'm going to cover it up with shooting up heroin, sniffing coke, smoking weed, whatever I do, right? Or I'm going to cover it up with life experiences. So you see these people that's like, oh, I just, I just have to travel... I just have to see things. So every day, they have spent blow all their money. They save up $50,000 and then blow it on a trip here. They save up $15,000 and then blow it on a trip here. And this, I'm not talking about people who just got it. These are people, this day last dime. It's people that gotta go on a vacation every year. Nothing, and, and let's be clear, nothing wrong with traveling. Nothing wrong with going on vacations. But if you're doing that to escape a reality, just know that it'll be there when you get back. And that goes for drugs, the same thing. There's stuff going on with people that they don't deal with. So they go and they turn to drugs and they turn to whatever, right? They turn to something to try to escape the reality. And that's where depression is. And you mess around and you mess around and you can't keep up. Right? Because you got to keep, you got to keep upping yourself. You got to keep doing something. Dude, what do you think he was trying to do? He was like, man, all right, let's go to China and eat roaches. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, let's just give me some, I just, we need something more. No, that's not crazy enough. You, you can tell where the meetings was. They're like, no, that's not going to cut it. Dude, what Japan got? Give me a cat. We can't do that on TV. Ugh, well, we don't have to film it. Just let me eat the cat. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, like, I, I have to do something here. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. What else we got? Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. He's ready to perish. He's ready to die. That's why you got to give him the strong drink. His butt is ready to die. Drink and drunk him up so he can live a little bit longer. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Mm-hmm. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Right? They want to need people to don't even be poor. You know what I'm saying? But poor people, they're trying to forget that they're poor. And then other people who got money and got resources... They look at me, I just want to forget. Hey, I just want to forget my misery. I want to forget the fact that this stuff, I thought it was going to say, I sold myself out. I did all this, this weird stuff to get to what I got. And you know what? It didn't make me as happy as I thought it was going to make me. Now I just live, I, I just got to live with all this stuff, this shame, man, because I did all this stuff. I didn't did some unspeakable things to get where I am. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Turned on people, did some stuff I'm not proud of, all this type of stuff. I don't think. Nah, they do. Maybe like the average rich person. <laughs> nah, they do. Oh, no. They got it. They in the same position. These politicians be on drugs. Too. Oh, no. These politicians be, you know what I'm saying, they be, they, they be sitting there chasing their darn heart, chasing other stuff they got going on too. I'm trying to tell you. But now I will say, there are a lot of people that don't have these feelings. Oh, yeah. They're... But the, you know what I'm saying, you have to understand, all it is, being a sinner don't mean that you got to live a sad life. Now, there's a lot of sinners that secretly live very sad lives. That's because they're not living reality. 
You can be a sinner and accept your reality. I'm going right to hell, but this is why I'm doing it, and I'm about to live it up. I'm not trying to fake the phone. I know who I am, and you, listen, and them going to them gonna be cold stone, like just, you know what I'm saying, just cold stone sinners. Then you got other people to be like, they sin and be like, but, but my heart is in the right place. I'm just trying my best. I mean, I make mistakes here and there, but I'm still a good person. Them are the ones that's going to suffer. Them are the ones that are going to have mental issues. Because you, you're trying to keep two things true, and it, it just doesn't work, and your body going to reject that. Keep going. Watch this. They ready to pair it. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all of the, uh, in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Mm -hmm. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously. She telling. She giving advice to a king. Right? She giving advice to a king. She trying to tell you, stay away from drink. Right? Since you got this powerful position, when you see people that need your help, don't be just standing there idly by. Open up your mouth for them. You know what I'm saying? Help them out. Like, no, no, no. Don't do that to them. Because you powerful. When you say it, people going to listen. Right? Keep going. It's a woman. Watch this. Open thy mouth and judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Mm-hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? Look at this. This is what I was trying to get to. And remember, they're going to tell you, Bible say, Bible say, woman got to stay home, take care of the kids. I don't know. I can't listen to no Bible tell me that. You know what? You're right. I wouldn't listen to no Bible telling me that either. Watch this. <laughs> the heart of a, who can find a virtuous woman? Watch this. For her price is far above rubies. Look, her price is far above, she's expensive. You know what I'm talking about? Cost a lot. That's the book told you. Cardi B right about that. You know what I'm talking about? She right about that part. She expensive. Let's see how far Cardi B get. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. No, oh, that got that. Cardi B out of it there. You know what I'm saying? She out of it there. You know what I'm saying? That darn wop. You know what I'm saying? That, thing, that got that. That thing done. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Can't so, trust her as far as you can darn throw her. You know what I'm talking about? So that he shall have no need of spoil. Mm-hmm. She will do him good and not evil in the days of her life. That's right. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She does what now? Seeks wool. Excuse <coughs> me. Oh, she seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. What's wool and flax? It's making clothes. Yeah. Right? That means she's seeking it, though. So that means she's going out there. Remember, our people, I would have a sheep or a goat, and I'm cutting it to get wool. Flax is coming up out of the ground, right? So that means I'm going out there, I'm growing it, and harvesting my flax. That's how I'm getting my materials. And she works with what? Uh, with her hands. She doing it. Keep going. Watch this. She is like the merchant ships. She's like a what? The What's a merchant ship? Somebody that um, owns goods to yeah. sell. You know, somebody like a like a hustler, entrepreneur. The book is telling you. Somebody this, to set up shop. This is what the one what they describing about this woman. She go out there and she get her own wool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? She's shaving that thing, and she out there she get her flax. From that she working with her hands. She making her own clothes. She like a merchant ship. What you what you need? Yep. You need a shirt? Got some Gucci back. You know what I'm saying? What you need? Shirt? Purse? You know what I'm saying? What you need? I got it. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. What else? She brings her food from afar. So she sold these. She made something. She sold it. Right? Then she went far away, got some, she bought some food. And she bringing it back to the crib. Right? Let's see. She rises also while it is yet night and she, gives meat to her household. Listen. A portion of her to her maiden. Listen. Book says she rises while it was. She just got done working. You understand? She out here like, yo, what you need? She got it. Okay. From that, I buy dinner. She brought back dinner. Right? Did the book say she cooked the dinner? She rises also while it is yet night. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Did the book say she cooked the dinner? No. No, no, no. Book just say she got the food, she got it, brought it in. Next thing you know, she rises. That means she ain't cooked nothing. She got the food and went to sleep. And then woke up while it was yet what? While well, it is yet night and gives meat to her household. In a it was yet night. In other words, that's early in the morning. She woke up, it's still dark outside. You know what? All right, the food that I picked up last night, boom. Give it meat to her what? Her household. Everybody in the house got to eat. And a portion to her maidens. And then a portion to her, to the people that serve her. Right? 
She provides for everybody. All right, watch this. She considers a field and buys it. With the food Hold on, who we talking about here? We talking about the woman that just stay in the house and got to cook and clean, don't get to see outside? No, she just got done. She went out there, made her, boom, sold her shirt. Okay, did that another, got the food, got the, okay, brought it back, went to sleep, woke up, fed everybody, back out. On that field, baby, you think we need that? <laughs> Who made that decision, her or her husband? Book say this a virtuous woman. Give me the. No, I don't know. You got too many holes in that field. What you what you asking for this one over here? Okay, give me that one. At the book, ain't describing none of this stuff they be talking about. Keep going. Watch this. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. Uh huh. She girds her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. Uh huh. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Look, she know. She like, listen, I know what I be selling is good. Top quality. What up? Her candle goes not out by night. Mm -hmm. She lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. Okay. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Okay. She's not afraid of the snow for her household. Look, she, ain't, she, household she, she said, what? She's not afraid of what? Of the snow. If it gets the snow in here, oh, I don't want to go outside. She got work to do. She got stuff to sell. What you talking about? It's a business woman. Watch it. Keep going. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her no, no, you missed something. Keep going. Go She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Everybody got jackets. That stuff don't bother her. Get y'all butts out there. Let's go. We got work to do. Watch this. Keep going. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Uh huh. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. What you mean? You think a woman like this going to have some nobody as a husband? Books say no. Husband known in the gates. She got, she got a husband of status. You said with the elders of the land. You think a woman like this, what type of what type of man you think a woman like this gonna get? She gonna get her a man to add to what she doing. She ain't gonna get no, you know what I'm saying? A virtual woman. She ain't gonna get no darn sorry darn man just sitting there. She gonna get a man be like, yeah, no, nah, I'll take care of everything else then. Don't even worry about it. Right? Let's see. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchant. Mm -hmm. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Mm -hmm. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Mm -hmm. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Mm -hmm. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Mm -hmm. Many daughters have done virtuously, but you excel them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her to the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I got that. Right? That's the top of top of the woman. Right? These people have you thinking, oh, the best woman you can be. Just stay in the house. Take care of the kids. Right? That's not the book. Best woman you could be is you get out there, you take care of the kids, and your butt get out there and work, and your butt do everything else. Right? They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that, right? They want one or the other. And really, it's just the other. You know what I'm saying? They just want to get out there and work. And, you know what I'm saying? If you even count that, right? A lot of them just want to be taken care of and still be seen as an independent woman. Yeah, you can't really have both. There ain't nothing wrong with being a woman that's taken care of. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You just can't run out there, I'm getting taken care of, there's another. And I don't need no man. Sit your butt down. Like, why is that even a bragging point? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you think that's even something to brag about? This stuff is backwards. Ain't nothing to brag. I don't need no man. Yes, you do. It's fine if you can get by without one. You know what I'm saying? But there's no, yeah, no, you got to do, though. You're like, you don't need no man? You don't need no daddy? You don't need, you don't need no man? That's a problem to think that. I'm not saying that you got to say you need a husband or you need, that's fine if you don't need no husband. I'm with you on that. Like, you don't need a husband. But you don't need no man? Oh, no, that's a, no, that's a problem. It's a bad mindset. Right? It's just a bad mindset. Books set it up that, you know what I'm saying, the man's supposed to protect a, a woman. Whether it be the father, whether it be the brother, whether it be the, you know what I'm saying, the, the husband. Books set it up that way. You go in, it's an order of the book, you say something stupid like that. Can't be no virtual money. How are you going to fear God? You go against the order of his book. Virtual woman got to fear God. Right? All right, let's see if we can try to finish out at least one chapter of Peter. I don't know what's wrong with y'all today. This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. I think we left off, what, verse 3, verse 2? 
first one. Hot to mop. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, mm -hmm. that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And he says that that way because a woman don't have no business teaching a man the book. So he's saying, oh, you know, be in subjection to your own husband. That way, if your husband don't got the word, if he don't obey the word, then he can look through your conduct. When you're in obedience to the word, and through that, it'll give a window for him to be like, oh, you know what? I need to be obedient to the word, too. Without you ever, you know what I'm saying? Without the woman having to ever say, the word, say a word to him. You know what I'm saying? Because she ain't got no business teaching him. I wonder what that will really look like. I think it's probably like a miracle. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if it was really, Yeah, really like in today's, done. yeah. In yeah. today's society. Like if it was really, really, really done, like, right. Like, you got to But I don't think, so, in today's society, I think what we would imagine is a toxic relationship. Right, like this relationship that's just this problems and arguments and all this other stuff. I don't think that's what this is talking about. I think I think Paul addresses that, right? Paul, I think he addressed. Let's grab it real quick. This is a this is a First Corinthians chapter seven. Um, give me verse. Uh, uh, somebody gonna have to help me out with the verse. I want to say it's in the middle. That probably got like thirty, maybe thirty-seven verses in it. So maybe it's about verse. Verse 17 is what I'm looking for. Yeah, 13. 13? Talk to the book, sir. And the woman which has a husband that no, believes go back before not. That. But to the rest speak I not the Lord. If any brother has a wife that believe not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which Hold has... Hold on, he said the rest what? But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Right. So let's go back a little bit before that. What verse? Uh, verse 10. All right. So this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. It's important to, to kind of pay attention to what he's saying in this, in this chapter. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. So he starts off in saying, I command, but it really is not me that's commanding this. God is commanding this, right? So what he's about to say is a commandment of God, right? Watch this. Let not the wife depart from her husband. A wife cannot depart from her husband. He didn't say divorce. He said depart. In other words, the wife cannot leave the husband, right? Watch this. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Right? But he said this is still part of the commandment. But if she does depart... Right? Let her remain unmarried. Notice, none of this does he say divorce. Right? So he's saying, let the wife not depart. In other words, he's saying, I'm encouraging you. Not This is a commandment, though. It's not an encouragement like, oh, it's a man. He, it, look, do everything. And this, is, this is what he's saying. God is commanding you to do everything to stay with your husband. Right? However, if that thing just absolutely ain't working out, then remain unmarried. In other words, never get divorced. Okay? Now watch this. Or be reconciled to her husband. Right? Or go back to him in the state that y'all was in. That's what it means when he's saying be reconciled. And let not the husband put away his wife. Right? Let not the hu husband send his wife out the door. What else? But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. So now he's saying, but to everybody else, he's saying to the rest, to everybody else, now, I'm speaking, this ain't God commandment, right? Because he started off by saying, I'm commanding you, but it's really not me commanding you, it's God commanding you. Now, he's coming back, he said, okay, I was talking to the married people. Now, to everybody else, I'm not speaking as a commandment. This is just me, just talking to you. It's my advice, right? Let's see. But the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife that believes not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So his advice is, if you have a wife, and she is not, you know what I'm saying, obeying the most high God word. And she don't want to be with you. This is the toxic relationship. Let her butt go. Right? Keep going. And the woman which has a husband that believes not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Right? Watch this. 
For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Mm -hmm. The unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Mm -hmm. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Mm -hmm. but Watch this. If the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. So that's what he's saying. He's saying, look, best case scenario, same thing that Peter was saying. Look, by the conduct, by your conduct, maybe they'll be won over with the word. Right? However, if they but want to leave, let them go. So that, that kind of addresses the toxic situation. You know what I'm saying? If this is a situation where it's just like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to You ain't got to sit there and beg and try to convince them to stay with but you and all that stuff. It does not say you can get remarried, right? No, 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 no. Just let them leave. Same, same. The commandment's still the same, right? Let's go back. Let's make sure that that's a good point. I go back and a lot of people try to do that. The commandment is the commandment. Watch what the commandment says. I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife, wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. That's a commandment. You can in nowhere, it said, in other words, you cannot divorce once you marry. He follows that up with, with a suggestion, with his advice. Like, listen. Now, if one of y'all believe the word and the other one don't believe the word and y'all ain't really getting along with that, I would advise that y'all stay together. However, if the unbelieving one just say, you know what, I'm done with this and they want to leave, don't try to keep their darn butt. Let them darn leave. Right? That's what he's saying. He's saying, look, my advice is y'all try to figure it out because, man, you don't even know, man. You look, that thing will work out. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know. Most I got to work on them through you. But let me tell you something. If they butt just want to leave, you know what I'm saying? They just... If that's just what they want to do, let they butt go. You ain't got to be in bondage to that. Because he's trying to tell you, you ain't got to keep putting yourself to these down. It's some, it's some relationships. Them things is rough. People are hitting on each other and calling each other names. And just People just don't feel good at all. You know what I'm saying? And that's rough to try to put up. People, Paul trying to tell you, you ain't got to keep putting up with that stuff, man. They butt want to go that bad, just let they butt go. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to keep going through that, that darn rigmarole. You know what I'm saying? That ain't crazy. All right? That's why he said it's advice at that point. He's just trying to like, yo, look, I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to let you know. You know what I'm saying? It's a way out. You know what I'm saying? If, if you need to. You cannot remarry. You cannot remarry. All right? You cannot remarry. You know what I'm saying? So it, it puts you in the position. You got to wait. You got to wait. Now, we can get what the Messiah said to back up the claim. Where is that? Uh, I think it's Matthew 7. Right. No, it's not Matthew 7. Matthew, uh, Matthew 5. Probably Matthew 5, check about verse 40. Yeah. It's probably higher up in 40. 40 is probably too low. Because you know, when people be like, you know, God want me to be happy. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. They ask stuff no attention no more. You know what I'm saying? All right, what you say? You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Right in your darn mouth. Okay, uh, Matthew 5, 21. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. What does the book say? Yeah, Y'all sure about to tell us the same way, different words, same thing in different words. You have said, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, or whoever shall kill shall be like my dog. Where did I get this from? Might be a little higher. And then thou shalt not kill. Maybe name Matthew 5. Yeah, I don't think it is Matthew 5. I think it's somewhere else. It was like when he was like, uh, when it was like, when, when he was talking about Moses putting in, putting away. Yeah, try Matthew 7. That was what I was going to say originally. But I was thinking maybe it was in the rundown Matthew 5. Matthew 7, maybe, uh, maybe at the beginning of Matthew 7. It is Matthew 5? Matthew 5. What verse? Uh, Matthew 5, 31. 31. <laughs> okay. 31, not 21. It is Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. Watch this. It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, cause her to commit adultery. 
And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. All right? So it shows you there that truly, although you think you divorced, you still married. That way, you you sleeping with a married woman, therefore, is divorce. Or she sleeping with, or she uh, as a married woman is adultery. As adultery, I'm sorry. And then she sleeping with a married, or uh, she being married, sleeping with a man, although she thinks she's divorced, is really adultery because she's still married. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing as what Paul just said. The commandment was that, you know what I'm saying, you stay with him, but if you let him go, remain unmarried. And a man shouldn't put away his wife. All right? So in other words, you can't divorce. All right? Ain't no, there ain't no such thing as that. You know what I'm saying? For a married person. And that goes for whether you one is unbelieving or not. You know what I'm saying? That commandment applies to marriage. Then after that, he says, this is not a commandment. This is just me running my darn mouth. It's my advice to you. You let them go if you need to. He didn't say nothing about divorcing or you can remarry or nothing of like that. That commandment still stands. You cannot remarry. You know what I'm saying? That thing, that thing, you, Paul, and he came back later and made sure it was clear. This is me talking. So it's not, it's, Paul's, Paul's advice is never going to supersede the commandment. Right? You know what I'm saying? It's just, that's just what it is. Luke 18 said it. Luke 16, 18 said it better. That's what I was looking for. What is that here? So whosoever put away his wife and marries another commits adultery. And whosoever marries her that is put away from her husband commits adultery. That's literally what we just read in the other one, too. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> this one's like more clear. Because the other one is like, you know what I'm saying? Well, he said, you heard it, you know what I'm saying? Like, this one, with this one, I don't think is no wiggle room. Like, none of them is wiggle room. But this was like, <laughs> there's no wiggle room. Yeah. <laughs> this was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? You really can't do it. Yeah, buddy. All right, let's go back to First uh, Peter chapter 3. While they behold your chaste conversation coped with fear, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plant, plaiting the hair and wearing, plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold and What's putting on the hair? Hair apparels, braids. Braids, right? They're talking, this is all talking to a woman, right? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Don't let it be, you know what I'm saying? When, they, when you got that outward adorning, don't let it be because you braided your hair. What else? Uh, wearing of gold or uh, putting on of, of apparel but let it be the hidden man let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ador uh, ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is the sight of God which is which in which is in the sight of God of great price All right so Jeez. what what it's telling us there is you know what I'm saying you see women right now it's like they, they try to do everything to get their body shots and do all this other weird stuff because they want a physical appearance right part of that physical appearance was you know what I'm saying braids and, and, and wearing jewelry and and uh, wearing the fanciest clothes and all that stuff, right? And he's like, man, don't let your adorning be because of that, right? I why you know that my you know, you know, we, we ain't doing no braids, you know what I'm saying? No jewelry, none of that, you know what I'm saying? Because we wanna we wanna try to align ourselves exactly with what the book say. Like the book is telling us very clearly. Now, what does this mean? Is this saying it's a sin? No, we you know what I'm saying we just read off the sin from from Yahushua, right? I'm not trying to say that a person got braids in their hair, they going to hell. Right, that's that's not beyond. I ain't saying you not. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that I'm not telling you that, cause that's not what the books say. I can only go as far as the books say. From there, as far as my understanding of the book, Most High God can judge from there. I leave that for Him. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to judge in His place. That don't make no sense. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna judge what He commanded. Right? The man gave us is well, right here. He giving us commentary and telling us, you know what I'm saying? This is what's going on. This that another. From the Apostle Peter. Right? But it's never put forth as a sin that will prevent you to go from prevent you from getting into the kingdom. Right? We got places where we can read those sins, right? We read one, Mark chapter 7, right? Uh, we can go to Galatians, Galatians uh chapter uh, 5, verse starting at about verse 19, right? Or we can go to uh uh Ephesians chapter 5, starting at about verse what is it, 3, something like that. Right? And it'll give us the sins, right? This is, this is what you, you know what I'm saying, can't do, and this is what you can do. 1 Corinthians 6 9. First Corinthians 6 9 is another one. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 6 9 is the one I'm thinking about, not Ephesians. I don't remember Ephesians. Yeah, Ephesians. yeah, not Ephesians. Yeah, not Ephesians. It's first, first Corinthians 6 9. All right? So you look at those places, you know what I'm saying? That'll tell you what the sins are. It tells you very clearly a person doing these things are defiled, or a person doing these things. Will not enter into the kingdom. 
That's very clear, right? The Bible is very clear. This, these are the things that will prevent you from entering into the kingdom. Those are the things that we're saying for the purpose of entering into the kingdom are sins. These other things are, 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 um, are that's God's order. He's putting forth his order, how he wants things to be, right? And we would be with us to fall into it because what it does is it protects us from the sins, right? Because it's just, a, it's just one step. It's like, okay, I'm wearing braids and I got jewelry on. Next thing I know, I'm adorning myself. People have an outward appearance and now I'm being tempted. Right? It's certain girls, right? Back in our day, right? Certain girls that carried themselves a certain way. Did we mess with them? Mm -hmm. You carry us. Listen, it's certain girls, they carry themselves a certain way. I ain't even wasting my darn time. You know what I'm saying? We be thinking, her, oh, she, she ain't even, you know what I'm saying? She ain't gonna get, cause she ain't gonna give me what I'm looking for. That's too much darn, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I ain't got I ain't wasting my darn time. We don't go at the one, what, which one we go for? Shalonda, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Shawanika, you know what I'm saying? She got the purple and the red braids. Mm. You still like them braids? Braids. See what the book say. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let me tell braids. you. Keep them darn braids. I remember. I remember. A girl named Maymay. -May. You know what I'm saying? I was. I was probably. I was probably Zakai age. Maybe Zakai. How old are you? Four now? I'm probably Zakai age. Maybe five. You know what I'm saying? I used to play outside. She had these braids, you know what I'm saying? I was in preschool. And we went there and she always had these darn braids. So we thought, you know what I'm saying? I thought we, you know what I'm saying, going together. You know what I'm saying? That was my girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? A little, little four or five years, just fast, right? That was my girlfriend. We holding hands, doing all this stuff. What you looking at, boy? I'll beat your darn butt. He want a girlfriend so bad. I'm going to beat your darn butt. Right? You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? He thought it was my girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? So we, we go, you know what I'm saying? And then one day, she came. And her hair wasn't done. You know, because she a black girl. You know what I'm saying? You got to take them out sometime. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't never seen her without braids. Like, all this time we lived in the same neighborhood, all this time she always had her hair done. Always. Her mama always got her stuff done. And it always looked nice as far as I can remember. You know what I'm saying? Then one day she came running up to me, ugly butt, the darn hair just darn messed up, fresh out, crinkled up and all this stuff. I saw that stuff, and I was like, I told her flat out, I was like, I don't like you no more. <laughs> Get your butt. Let me tell you something. To this day, that girl ain't never spoke to me again. Hey. These little girl be remembering this stuff. Hopefully, hopefully I helped her, though. <laughs> I probably hurt, though. You know what I'm saying? She probably ain't never taken out her braids again. You know what I'm saying? But you look at it, it's like, that's the stuff that we like. We Hebrews. It's the same thing back then. It's what they looking like. He knew. Peter knew. He like, I know what they like now. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, we know they like little, you know what I'm saying? Little individual. You know what I'm saying? They don't even do it. Them thick ones starting to look real nice now, too. <laughs> yeah, you got them big old thick ones, you know what I'm saying? Come on down like that. No. Like with the fresh, you know what I'm saying? Because you all, we used to get like the fresh twist. You can see your scalp. Mm -hmm. The thick would be all fresh. I'm like, oh, I'll be seeing it. I'm like, oh, this is nice braids. <laughs> oh, no, I was just the homegirl. You know what I'm saying? She didn't post a picture because she do hair. I was looking at that. I was in there messing around. I'm like, them darn. What's they called? What's it? The part? I was like, them bar parts are so straight. Mm -hmm. I was in there appreciating the artwork of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, man, they think go, but that's what it's talking about. That's what it's talking about. You know what I'm saying? You look at it, and it's, you know, it's the, the overall, the overall thing, because it don't just stop at braids, right? You know what I'm saying? It's just really. Don't put yourself in the position where you doing, you going out of your way to do the stylish things to get the, that outward attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he's telling you that's going to get you in trouble. It's just going to get you in trouble. Watch it. Keep going. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price. When you say ornament, ornament, he kind of playing back on the jewelry. So he said, don't wear jewelry. But he said, in other words, Use the jewelry of a meek and quiet spirit, right? So he said, let people see the stuff that they can't see. You know what I'm saying? You want somebody, get them by getting them to see the stuff that they can't see. And that's, that's real. Like, people don't be paying attention to that type of stuff in a book, but that's real life relationship advice. Like, I'm telling you from experience, if you carry yourself in a certain way, the knuckleheads will not give you any problems like they're not even gonna come your way you know what i'm saying and when they do come your way they're gonna come correct 
Because they already know. They're looking like, oh, I can't just walk up to you and just say anything. Or, I can't just do it. He's long enough to wear. You exhaust. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they gonna try. You know what I'm saying? They gonna be like, no, 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 sweetheart. Uh, I was wondering. You know what I'm saying? This same dude. Is like, hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, hey, baby. He gonna see this one. He's like, nah, I think I can get it. Sweetheart, I, 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 I just wonder if I could take you out on to have a meal. You know what I'm saying? To have a meal to eat. Do you mind? No, no, I'll pay. Right? Go through that round about three times. He figure out ain't nothing happening. But I mean, I ain't like you anyway. You're gonna do the same thing I did to the girl. You know what I'm saying? I ain't like you anyway. Keep I ain't got time. Cause I we don't know what we here for, you know what I'm saying? Why well, ain't got time to be cutting up? Or go back up a couple verses. Watch this. Who's adorning letter? No, nah, go back up. About no, verse behold your three. Oh. Maybe verse three. Who's adorning let it not be verse two there. While they behold your chase conversation coupled with fear. While they do what? Behold your chase conversation. Couple what is days. chase conversation? Uh, strict, um, strict conduct principle. You behaving correctly, right? So there's two options. The man can get frustrated and be like, "Man, I can get one. I don't like you anyway." Or the other one, he look at it and you teach him something without opening his darn mouth. He sit there and look at you and be like, "Man, I ain't never met no girl like." It was the ones where it was like you wouldn't even try to get at them like that. That's a right? fact. It was like I like hanging out with you. Sure. That's a fact. It's like the whole time even... we was just chilling, watching TV. Like yeah. you carry yourself way different from the girl that you know what I'm saying to get down. You know what I'm talking about? Like the ones that I want to get down. You know what I'm saying? Like them. It's like I I know what it takes. Like you. The other one. It just be like oh no you the homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you cool. Now how that make that girl feel? She feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, all you guys don't even be wanting me. Am I pretty? But that's just because they don't have people in their life to teach them. Like, the reason, it ain't got nothing to do with whether you pretty or not. The reason this is happening is because you not putting off the energy that's easy to them. They know if they come, they come your way, they got to switch up their whole game plan. They got to rethink everything. This line ain't going to work. They got a mold, right? They got a mold that. Women like being told this, so I'm going to tell them this. Women like when I do this, so I'm going to tell them this. They got that mold. They ready. They already positioned for it. They got their lines. Right? They confident in it. They see something else like, I got to figure out a whole new puzzle piece to crack that one. I don't have time for that. And even if I do, I'm going to try it. And if the girl's legit and really has chase conversation, chase behavior, right? Correct behavior. Right? then it still ain't going to work. And he eventually is either going to be frustrated or he going to learn a better way through that situation. That's all it is. That's what I'm telling all my homegirls. Like, I, I get it. I understand. I know you lonely and you want this and this, that, and that. I get it. I understand. Don't waste your time. Set your standard. You know what you want. You're not being unreasonable. Don't let nobody tell you that you're being unreasonable. Stop, stop. Carrying yourself, you know, in a way to, you know, trying to be like these other girls. These other girls, they getting what they get, I promise you. Like, I don't, like, I don't know how I many times I got to take you through it. Like, sure, she she fly. She nice, uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Go talk about our last seven relationships. <laughs> Let's just go talk about it. All these women out here, going, they're they going through, they're going through uh, the, 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 to, they, they, these women are to the point where they say, I'm going to be like the man. I'm going to do it the man. And you think they like that? They sick. They out there sick, doing drugs, doing everything to try to get to the next day. Stuff ain't cool. They make it cool. And so guess what? That's the cycle. They make it cool. They sitting there, uh-uh, I do this. And get with the guy seat. Sharp. You know what I'm saying? Look at that like, got her. You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what to do. Now the game has changed. It seems like now, just now you just need a little bit more money. It's just everything. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Just seems like it's just a bunch of money involved now. Yeah, I broke bus wouldn't be able to keep up. Was like <laughs> nah, that day, that day, you know, that we had to play a different game with that thing. Because you ain't getting it out of me. You gotta be somebody for real these days, bro. You ain't getting it out of me. I'm gonna be like, nah. yeah, that's, that's <laughs> you know what I'm just gonna work hard for the chase thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you talking about? <laughs> you ain't getting it out of me. Yeah. That thing that's ain't worth it. like, they like. With all the stuff they can do now, they like way more prettier, dude. Oh, yeah. All of them, all of them look the same. Yeah, they do. 
Yeah, all of them look the same. They got that pretty personality too. It's like, oh man, that's yeah. Awesome. You can't do nothing with it. You can't do nothing with an ugly girl that can be pretty. Nah, what you gonna do? All y'all pretty? My goodness gracious! Stock market all the way off. I don't know how y'all out here surviving now, baby. What that thing would be good to hit nobody against nobody now. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Like, all of them know they fine, too. <laughs> it's like, I know I'm fine because I look just like her. Yeah. You know what I'm like, good to great. Boy. Hot tamale. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll be out here like, woo! I'm out here, boy. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'll tell y'all what y'all gotta do. Look, what you gotta do. Get you a little microfiber rag. Microfiber. You know what I'm saying? Put a little bit of ain't the trick oil, Baby. and rub it down a little bit of oil. Baby. You know what I'm saying? You just walk up to your friend. You know what I'm saying? Just rub all that stuff off their faces. Like what you look like now? They gonna melt it. Ah! You know what I'm saying? What you look like darn now? You know that vampire in the sunlight. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. That's the only way you can equal it out. You know what I'm saying? Remind them who they are. This is you. You know what I'm saying? Now you where you go with me? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's the only thing you ain't got no other shot. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, be a baller. You know what I'm saying? Buy some of that attention, man. That thing. Goodness yeah, gracious. Like I gotta keep that up, so nah, I'm not saying you got Nah, man, nah. It's it's just the game changed now. It's what it seemed like. The game changed. It used to be, you know what I'm saying? It used to be, you know what I'm saying, that that, you know what I'm saying? Now you gotta have to change behavior. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta. <laughs> you know you do, but you really do, bro. You that's all nah, you that's all it is. You you just gotta have to be like, nah, I ain't even interested. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even mad that. Girl, and wait till wait until she get mature and come around. Cause that's what that's what women have to do. You know what I'm saying? Like they gotta they gotta have a chase behavior and wait until until they find a man that's just mature and not in that lifestyle. And that's ready to to kind of go through the, you know what I'm saying, the, the true courting process mm -hmm. with honesty. You know what I'm saying? And when that happens, then she'll find what she needs, but that takes a lot of patience. So now I just switch. It's like now that the men, you know what I'm saying, you either go spend the money and play them games with them or you just got to sit back and just be like, oh, now I'm not even interested in this. This whole scene that you got going on, I'm not even interested in that. And then let her come to you and be like, man, okay, I'm, I'm tired of this lifestyle. I haven't lived a lot. You know what I'm saying? My body count way up here, but will you take me? I mean, you just got to be like, girl, yeah, 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 way well, more aggressive now. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Then you, you just got to hit them with the, you say, how many now? Goodness gracious. All right, you know what I'm saying? We'll make it work. You know what I'm saying? You done? You show? You sure. show. All right, you know what I'm saying? Good gracious, we'll make it work. You know what I'm saying? If you have to say, get out just a, you gotta you gotta be honest though. The women had to do the same thing a generation ago. Yeah, you're right though. You know what I'm saying? Like they had to, it ain't nothing but this stuff is just flipping around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It just flipped around. That's all and so they had to they had to put up the same thing. They had to, you understand like the wildness that you know what I'm saying, like that that we are getting away with, men getting away with in general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not speaking in specificity, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, in general, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people getting away with a lot of stuff on the male side. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, then a woman a woman gotta put up with that and she got, you know what I'm saying, just like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Everybody you gotta you gotta figure it out. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta figure it out. At the end of the day, everybody is redeemable. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is redeemable. Everybody everybody can get a chance. You can make anything work. You know what I'm saying? Anything you can make it work. You just gotta make sure the person that you with is willing to make it work too. When I look back and all the girls I thought was wild, you know what I'm saying? When I look back, for a man they trust, they definitely would have been what they needed to be. No, no, yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta show yourself a man. You can't like, like Peter just told us, don't give your strength to the woman. Just don't give it to the woman. You know what I'm saying? What he mean by that is, it's just Everyone don't be sitting there, don't be sitting there folding. Like remain the person. Like you gotta be what she need. Right. She gonna be what you need too, but you gotta be what she need, and you gotta do it first, or you gotta step out first. Just be like, man, that's what it is. You can't play them games. I told my wife, I said, this is how it's going to be. And it wasn't no bossy, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no, like, on, on no bossy. So I just, I just got to put it out there. I just got to look. I'm going to lay it out there. I got a plan. You can trust what I got going on. And I ain't going to never stop proving that to her. She might darn forget. She be getting, listen, my wife forget every darn day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every day she be looking like, I don't know if you know what you're doing. I got to I gotta do tricks every day. Like, oh, ah, made that happen. Look at that. She be like, oh, I love you, babe. Next day, I don't know. Ah, came out with that one. Oh, this got nothing. Because that's what it is. These women got to know. They got to be able. Sometimes they ain't even got to see the vision. They just got to see you. You know what I'm saying? You got the vision. They they may not be interested. You might, women are different. Everybody different, right? You might have a woman that I love. I want to know the vision. I want to know where it's going. I want to be able to see it. I want to be able, you know what I'm saying? 
So you explain it to her. Look, baby, this is where we going to go. Right? This is what I see. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's a business or whether it's something simple. Like, man, we just going to get a nice, you know, nine to five job. This, that, and that. We're going to have this house or whatever. You do it. To, or you stay at home. You want to do the, Or you like doing that. Okay, I'm going to pay for you to go to this or whatever. Or we going to work together. We going to save up. We'll split it. And then you, whatever the plan is, just help her see it. Even if that plan is, baby, you are, you, you know, you going to be a CEO one day. And you know I can clean a darn house, baby. Even if that's it, right? I'm dead serious, though. Even if that's the case, just make her see the vision and make sure that you own it. Make sure that you own it, right? It's like even if she the breadwinner and all that, make sure that you as a man are owning it and saying, look, I'm going to guide you through this whole process, right? And if you ain't got that type of wisdom for your woman in the way that she needs, then that might not be the woman for you. Because even if you think, oh, she don't require that of me and this, that, and other, it's dangerous because eventually she gonna need that. She gonna need some type of guidance, some type of leadership, and if you can't provide that, that's gonna be an unorthodox relationship. And I would say you taking a risk because it's outside of the order of the book. You go find you something that you can you can you can contribute to in a way that you're a leader. You know what I'm saying? If you could do that, man, I said, man, he, yeah, you you prove yourself to these women, man. These women, they they do whatever you need. It's in their nature. Do whatever you and they do it with gladness. You know what I'm saying? These these women that feel scorned and all this stuff, all this stuff. And I don't need no man. This that another come from a couple things. One of the things is they were probably raised this way, right? Could be some other things too. Could be some bad experiences and all that playing into it too. No matter what it is, when you come through and you break down them barriers, and sometimes you gotta work, especially for our black women, right? Because our black women don't have an experience like these other women. These other women got hidden stuff. You think you you think you getting a prize, you going to you gonna find out you got a whole different stuff that you gotta deal with these other women. Trust me when I tell you. Right? The other women, you gotta deal with some stuff. You think it's easier, it might be easier for the public eye. It ain't easy behind closed doors. You tricking your darn self. Right? At the end of the day, though, everybody gotta get what they what works for them. You know what I'm saying? Like the formula of this woman that's not black might work better for your personality. Get what you can handle, right? But when you look at the black women, just know that you might have to work through some stuff up front. But man, you prove, you break down them barriers, you do what you got, man, you ain't going to never have nobody fighting for you like that. Because it's in them. They just need that direction. Right? Let's see what we got. You know what I'm saying? Let's jump back, back down. We is in 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to try to finish out this verse. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Mm -hmm. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel. As unto because what? The weaker the vessel. People take that disrespect. Mm -hmm. He ain't saying that disrespect the weaker vessel. What does that mean? You can look at nature and tell she's a weaker vessel. Right? We could just mean she's dealing with more. If I walk in, like if I just walk into the building, right? We have to race. Right? You walk in, all you got is your gym shorts, t shirt, you know what I'm saying? Some nice shoes. Right? I walk in and I got to carry on my back a bag. You know what I'm saying? I got weights on my darn ankles. You know what I'm saying? And my wrists, you know what I'm saying? My hands are tied behind my back. Right? You might look at me and be like, oh, I'm strong. Because when we run it, I'm keeping up with you. You might look at me and who's stronger? The one that's carrying everything. Right? But at the end of the day, if you win the race, who won the race? The one that wasn't carrying everything. Right? So it's like when the Bible is saying weaker vessel, it's not necessarily saying in terms of strength or muscles or anything like that. It's saying the one that's not going to, it's the vessel that's not going to be able to get there. When it's talking about vessel, you think about a ship. It's a ship that's not going to be able to get there. fast. Ships that's carrying more weight is not going to get there in the same way. It's going to get there slower. And let me tell you, women carry literally more weight, right? They got to deal with every month just based off of the chance that they might want to have a baby. You know what I'm saying? They got to deal with a menstrual cycle. 
That's just one example of the many things that women have that men ain't burdened with. And there's many of them, right? All the way from physical things to mental things to everything that women have to deal with. They have a natural inclination to deal with more things than we do. You got a baby that's tied to them, right? Baby come out. Baby's still tied to them because they nurse, right? Then they got this natural sense to deal with this baby differently, right? They got to nurture and handle this baby. Because there's a different level of connection there. The baby was like inside of him this whole time. And then after that, the baby was like right next to him the whole time, right? Then after that, it's like, okay, well, I have to kind of maintain this nurturing relationship. Right? So we, we look at it, it's like, that's a lot to deal with to then expect to, like, like for God to make a woman fit to handle that, like he has to make a, you know, a different set of, of, of you know, their frequency got to be a little different. You know what I'm saying? Like they settings got to be a different. To handle that, your setting got to be a little different. You may not be built the same way a man can. A man go out there and just knock somebody darn head off at some food. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to go shoot this animal in the darn net. You know what I'm saying? That might not mean nothing. But her, her sense has got to be a little different. Not saying she can't do that, but just saying if she can accomplish what the man accomplished, just guarantee she, she caring more when she do it. You ain't saying that a woman can't do what a man do. Quite the opposite. I believe a woman can do just about everything a man do. Right? That don't take away the fact that we are very different creatures. And if a woman can accomplish those things, she deserves more credit because she did it as the weaker vessel. Right? She did it with disadvantages in the, in the, you know, in the sense that we're, we're speaking of now. It's not truly a disadvantage. It's really an advantage, right? Because she does more than what a man does. There are things that women, if you look just physically, in general, women can do everything that a man does. Now, if you flip it around, there's many things that men can't do that women do. Many things. Very long lists. There's just things that physically we cannot do and we never will be able to do. No, it's all related to that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's all related to having a baby. That's a glory. That thing don't make it less valuable, though. That's what it is. I mean, you got to think about that, right? You got to think about that. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you, let's say being is the greatest thing in the world. All right, you came from a woman. I got that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you talking about? How you get here, woman? Oh, okay. Shut your mouth. <laughs> all right? Keep going. Your mama, you know what I'm saying? Your mama nursed your butt to get you to, to this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we kind of, we kind of like downplay that, but it's like, no. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do you understand, like, the root, like, you always have to get to a root of an issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just pop up and be like, oh, no, I'm the man. I'm the greatest man ever. No, you got to acknowledge, okay, you're the greatest man ever, man. You was raised by a mama. Right? Pops was there too, but man, you came from that darn mama. Right? Let's see. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion of one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are there, there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Mm -hmm. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Mm -hmm. Let him eschew evil and do good. Mm -hmm. Let him seek peace and ensure it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and the ears are and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I got that. <laughs> and who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But... And if you suffer for righteousness sake. You see what you say he came back. He was like, man, who going who gonna to mess with you if you're doing the right thing? Christian might stop reading there. Like, oh, doing the right thing. Nothing. Listen, then he come back and he say, what? But? If you suffer, suffer for righteousness sake, <laughs> happy are ye. Right? He come back and he cleared up. Like, okay, who going to do something to you if you righteous? <laughs> now, let me, let me tell you, though. If it do happen, y'all be happy. Right? And he's speaking, we talked about it last week, he's speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. Right? Keep going. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Mm -hmm. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you of a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right? We ought to, we ought to always have had that answer. He's like, he's like, be ready always. He's trying to tell you, man, people are going to ask you, like, man, why are you... He, 
He, he painted a picture, man, like, listen, you righteous. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to you, however. There's going to be some people that might do something to you. When they do it, you should be happy when you suffer. So now when you suffer, how do you think those people going to react? They be like, I just did you out of line. You still, you know what I'm saying? Or other people going to be looking like, man, he just did you out of line. You still, like, maintain, you know what I'm saying, your, your, your behavior. What's the next question? They going to be like, what? Like, what makes you, like, why do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, why do you stick with it like that even through all this adversity? He said, be ready. Make sure you got an answer for him. Right? Keep going. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, that they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you your good conversation in the Messiah. Your good behavior, right? Keep going. For it is better if the, if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. That's right. Watch this. For the Messiah also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Or sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Mm -hmm. The like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us. That's right. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Yahushua the Messiah, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of, the, uh, uh, right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the chapter? Yeah. All right. We're going to end it there. Any questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, let's pray out. What questions you got?